Uh, yeah, I've been here, as you say, probably five or more times, and I, it's always uh, nice, at least in three or four PSG defenses already. Uh, and uh, well, when I got invited for this talk, I was thinking, what can I talk about? And since I know that uh, there is a famous Sargantana processor here being the built, uh, I was thinking what of the techniques that we propose could be a better fit for that. And I did a selection of three, three lines of work that I will be presenting uh, today. And all of them can be summarized with prediction. Okay? Uh, but the claim is that we need prediction and accurate predictions for achieving higher performance in computers. So I will start the talk with this probably famous chart that was done by Google in a paper at this guy in 2019, where uh, I ran a Google a search uh, engine for their data centers and uh, discover the or uh, plot the percentage of time that the processor was doing useful stuff, this 32% here, or stalling for the different colorful reasons that are here. I'm going to focus on the three more important here, which is front-end latency, back-end memory, and bad speculation. So for the first one, front-end latency, uh, where uh, well, the, the, the reason why there is huge stall in data centers is because the, uh, among other things, L1 gas capacity. And uh, so the code footprint of server application is so large that does not fit in L1. And for that, the, the best technique that we can envision here are many others, but is instruction prefetching. So I will be first talking about the instruction prefetcher uh, that it can be, in my opinion, implemented in uh, processors. Uh, as far as I know, Sargantana has not a very wide decoupled front end. So when the front end is more uh, critical, it's uh, instruction prefetching can help much more. So I will be talking about that uh, later. Uh, the, the second part will be about backend, the higher problem here, 20%, according to Google for this uh, application, which is uh, see, uh, which is mostly due to L1D data cache misses. Um, many of them reach main, main, main memory. So this is a large, late, large latency that cannot be hidden by the auto for their course. Uh, but even if we have an in order core like the Sagantana, we can still, I mean, it's more and more important to have data in your uh, cache, not to have even more stores. Uh, and, and also because sometimes a branch depends on a previous load that missing in the cache, accelerating those loads help, uh, but speculation within the, which is the third reason that I, I will talk. But uh, for now, this is the second con contribution. It's a data prefecture called Berti, uh, and it was presented in Micro 22. Finally, uh, to finish with the, this prediction is all you need that I put here, bad speculation. Bad speculation we identified that happened for two main reasons. First is memory, first is branch prediction is the most important one still, uh, despite the huge advancements in the recent, uh, years by Daniel Jimenez and Andres and we are happy to have him here in the public. Uh, so, but memory dependence prediction not being the majority of the misprediction is still very important. So first, uh, and, and, the, and the thing is that branch predictor does the MPKI, so the, the mispredictions will not change as processor uh, are more deep, will make more impact but the mispredictions will be the same. But in memory dependence prediction, no. They are increasing, our pipelines are deeper. So we will present the third contribution here, memory dependence prediction, uh, we publish in SPCA 24. And I will not talk about branch prediction March here. Uh, I left the contribution out from this talk, uh, paper that we have in ISCA this year about alternative paths, uh, uh, Prefetching, pre 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 where we prefetch into the webcast. 
but I will, uh, since I identify these three contributions as the one that may be more targeting future BSC processors, I, I stay with, with those. So I will start with uh, first uh, entangling installation prefecture, uh, which is our contribution for addressing front end latency. Well, as I mentioned, prefetching is important for performance, even if uh, we have a decoupled front end. Uh, the decoupled front end is able to hide L1 uh, instruction misses, but uh, it's uh, it has uh, it's not always beneficial. Or it's uh, I will I will mention uh, the the trade off in decoupling the front end too much. So even in these cases, it's important to have an interaction prefecture. And uh, I, will, I will present the entangling with a previous version that was submitted to a first interaction prefetching championship. And this is a cost-effective version of it. We have the code for people to, to download it and to, and to play with it. Uh, so the motivation that we have here, both in instruction and in data prefetching, is timeliness. So prefetching has two key things, right? We need to know the address that uh, will be accessed by the processor, but we also need to know when it will be accessed. So the answer to the when is the timeliness. We want to prefetch it exactly just before the processor will access it. Uh, so I mean, we have an access, this is a timeline, we have an access. Um, there is a hit, perfect, because it's working as we want, but sometimes we have an access, there is a miss, we pay some time, some latency, and when we fill into the cache, everything is done. Uh, the ideal thing is to prefetch timely, is to trigger a prefetch for the line that we are going to access just before the access, such that the field come at time here, n minus one, and at time n, we can access, and we transform this miss into a hit. So if we do that, we solve prefetches, we get a coverage of 100% for our misses, sorry. And if we are, do it only for misses, then we get an accuracy of 100%. This is very ideal, but I will show at the end how we get results relatively close to it. So what is the concept of uh, entangled entangle, uh, uh, insertion prefetches? So imagine that we have an access to uh, instruction L. And now we, I'm talking here about instructions, not about cache lines. I will talk later about cache lines. So if we accept the cache, there is a miss, and we're paying some latency, as I explained before. So what we would like is to go back in time, go to prefetch. Uh, and at some point in time that we don't know, we can know after we pay the latency, but we cannot know before, we prefetch the, we trigger a prefetch for the line L. So that the line is in our cache. Uh, at that time, at the time the processor accesses it. That's very good, that will work very well. You transform the miss into a hit, but the question is, I mean, yeah, what is the time, right? We don't know. So our observation is that, I mean, the, 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 the access to L does not happen isolated. There are previous accesses that happen and we can, in the, and they are usually uh, recurrent and easy to learn and repetitive. So if we identify these previous accesses, we can see, wow, okay. Yes, after prefetch B is when I should trigger prefetch L. And this prefetch B is not back in time, no, because next time that we see B, after this latency time, we will see access to L. So I'm going to remember the latency, hoping that the latency will not change, and that the access pattern will not, will not change and prefetch L after B. So B is the... Uh, uh, access that should trigger the prefetch to L. So if we do that, we, we entangle. So we say the source is B, the destination is L, and these two instructions get entangled. We have this uh, idea of quantum entanglement as a, a name for the for this work. Uh, but this is very expensive. You cannot entangle all instructions within a program. So what we did, we say, okay, first we will try to entangle cache lines. Still, that's quite expensive. 
So in this example, these are the instructions that you see here and where the cast line they belong to. A to a cast line, B, C, and D to the next cast line, E to the next cast line, and E is a branch to a region of code that is not in a consecutive cast line. Okay. Uh, the instruction L. So we detect what is a basic block, that is a runtime block where no branch is taken. And this is what we consider basic block. And what we do if we entangle only the head of the basic block A with the head of the basic block where L is. Like that, we reduce quite a lot of the information that we need to store. Still, it's not a little the, the, inform the information, but it's quite reduced. So this is what we entangle. A cast line that is the head of a basic block with another cast line that is the head of a, of a basic block. So, okay, this is what we try to learn. How do we prefetch? So the way we prefetch is every time I see A, first I need to prefetch the whole basic block of A. I need to record that these two cast lines after it. This will most likely not be a timely prefetcher, but it's not uh, uh, hard thing to do it. And then we have an entangle per L and we record both, which is the uh, address of L and also whole uh, large is the basic block of L. In this case, one more, one cast line more, so we can prefetch L and the next, okay? And, and this is basically what we do. The thing is that we can have several paths, several sources, several destinations. We need to adapt to different behaviors and we can have in another execution that A gets entangled with X and we also prefetch several ones. It's an aggressive prefetcher, I would say, but uh, uh, aggressive because probably it's repeating prefetching the same thing, but in the end they get coalesced in the memory structures and uh, it's uh, everything more or less that we prefetch will be used later. So we'll give, I will give some numbers here. You will see this will have quite a lot. In the X axis, we have kilobytes. In the Y axis, uh, we have uh, speed up. Uh, so our ideal point would be here, okay? This is an ideal uh, L1 I cache, okay? And this is with a decouple front end where you can have up to 64, yes, 64 instructions uh, ahead, branch prediction calculation until uh, fetch. So this is, uh, you get, this is the normalized line, no prefetcher, and you can increase the L1i to double size here. You get a little bit of performance. You can increase it more. You get to three times more. You get a little bit more performance, but uh, you can also have an X line pre prefetcher here that it's funny because it's relatively good when you ha don't have have a processor with a decouple front end, but when you add a decouple front end, it's uh, below the, well, it's basically noise, okay? It's uh, what the decouple front end does, can do it the next line too. We have a deep uh, uh, um, proposal from Micro 13, that I call it et al, that is required 64 kilobytes and get 5% of speed up. Then we saw some other um, work from Mansari et al. published at ISCA 20. Uh, and the uh, top three um, prefecture, instruction prefecture in the instruction prefecture championship. Uh, and finally, this is well, our uh, cost effective version of uh, entangling. Okay, this is uh, it was the version that we did for the championship. It was 128 kilobytes, but quite large. So we tried to optimize it. And we found a sweet point here in four kilobytes. It's not little, it's almost the size. It's more than the size of the cache. Uh, uh, with 10% uh, uh, speed up. Interestingly, the, co the, the coverage is quite high. It's 87% across the average of all the applications that we use and 71% uh, of accuracy. So, uh, but then we were asking, 
So this is the final result that we have here, but we were asking uh, more questions. And I was thinking in, uh, in, uh, da in Daniel when I was doing these uh, slides, because uh, we are very in interested in the uh, wrong path. Um, so I was, uh, uh, we, we knew that Jamsim does not model uh, wrong path. So what we did for this work that we published this year uh, is, um, okay, what would happen to the entangling prefecture if you, we really, really model the room path and can we uh, tune it or make some fixes so that we have, uh, we don't have the bad effect of the wrong path. So this is our, our baseline in this graph. This is uh, normalized IPC, so speed up over uh, uh, the previous entangling uh, version that I saw in the graph before, and I explained when we don't care about wrong path. Uh, and this x-axis is when we increase the size of the fetch target queue, FTQ, which is the number of instructions that the ad address generation can go ahead to uh, L1 fetch. So as we increase uh more and more and more of course the speed up related to not increasing at all this uh, size it's getting more and more and more but the performance benefits of the prefecture gets more small okay uh but so i will focus only in the last one uh, of our proposal so the wrong path aware delay this is from the paper so we got, are able to improve sometime by 10% uh, or even by 5% with a large FTQ when we consider the effect of the wrong path. That, that is, if what we do is, if we start seeing instructions going into the processor, when they get squashed, we inform, inform our prefecture to discard them. There is some point when we store in the cache and we cannot uh, discard them, but while they are in the queues training, we can have simple mechanisms to, to discard them. And the other nice, well, and then we compare to other prefectures here, but uh, uh, we optimize it even further. So finally we get a uh, nice, uh, uh, some speed that we refer to other uh, proposed prefectures. An important thing here is that Yes, we can have a decouple front end, but how much can we decouple? So what we found out also is that energy-wise is not the best thing to do because you are running into the wrong path many, 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 many times. So here is energy delay product. And what we discovered is that the ideal point in decoupling, I will mark it here, the ideal point in decoupling depends on the a uh, prefecture that you use. So if you don't use any instruction prefecture, you may want uh, 128 instruction running ahead in the decouple. But if you have an accurate prefecture like our entangling pre prefecture with 64 entries, you get the optimal uh, in energy delay product. So this is the part of the instruction prefecture. Okay, I think then Let's put in time. I have until 45, right? Okay. So next, I don't know if you want to ask questions in the middle. We uh, wait for the end. What do you tell me? Okay. Um, obviously, so the effect of wrong path is very dependent on the branch picture that you choose. So the perfect branch picture, then we can run the decouple put in infinitely far ahead of the okay. Uh, and if you have a terrible branch picture, then it you know you shouldn't have a decouple, you know, shouldn't have a gradient put in at all. Uh, how do you model that? Uh, did, did, you, did you were using champs then, right? So uh, did you put in maybe the branch pictures or, or or did you explore what if I change the branch picture and actually see what is the so you you had this graph showing if I change the prefecture or you know, what is the difference? Yes. Very good question. Ah, yes. Yes. So the question from Daniel was: uh, 
the decouple front end has a lot of uh, importance uh, it, depending on the predictor that you have the branch predictor that 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 you have which predictor we use and uh how this can uh, affect so the um, yes we have a TCL. we have a version of the TCL. well is the code of the championship in branch prediction ported to to champsim but what we noticed that uh, that was not the key thing. The key thing was the BTB size. I mean, if you, I mean, you can have very good predictor, but you don't have the target on a taken branch. Forget about having good uh, predictor. We ran here uh, kind of idealized single level BTB one cycle access eight kilobytes, eight kilo entries. Okay. Of course, if we increase to sixteen kilobyte kilo entries or 32 kilobyte entries, the yeah, the couple is better and it can be shifted too. IT page. Yeah, like yes, yes, we have an IT page in the red target predictor. Mm -hmm. There are some, some, uh, I don't know if, uh, is it, uh, ah, no, okay, okay. Okay, yes. So, for information that the parameter used to simulate uh, the core care architecture for the uh, structure in the Yes. And have you considered other platforms like uh, second grade simulators? I would say Gemfight because Gemfight doesn't have a uh, couple for them. Mm -hmm. Have you considered other uh, simulators to test these ideas? Yes. Okay. Yes, good. So uh, we are talking about simulators. I'll give you more time to, to think all the answers. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we have done this work in Chansim. We model like a Sanicov um, processor. The question is if we have tried another simulators. Uh, for this work, not. For data prefetching, uh, that I will talk later, we are trying in our internal simulator and in Gen5 too. And for the last work, we also do, are doing it in our internal simulator, and we did also something in Gen5. But for instruction prefecture, since we depart from the championship and once on champsim, we, we stick uh, with it. The problem is that there are no other prefectures adapted and implemented for G, uh, Gen5 or others. So it's it makes much easier to do with, with champsim. Anyway, the front end model of champsim is quite good, I would say. More questions? Thank you. Uh, so I will continue with uh, Berti. With this is our micro paper in collaboration with Viswa from uh, Bombay, India, and my friend from Zaragoza. And uh, so we move from insertion prefecture to data prefecture. We go now to backend memory, but the concept is very similar. It's a timely prefecture. I will be talking about timeliness too. We were placing the insertion profession on L1i. This will be an L1d. Why L1d is super nice. You got you get all the accesses from the core out of order, but you get them. You get virtual addresses, uh, and you get the insertion pointer for sure in L2 in LC. Maybe you may not have it in some uh, arch architecture. So uh, and. Basically, if you want to prefetch, you want to prefetch to L1 because it's the one that will save you more cycles. Uh, so the, the, the name of, uh, I'd like to introduce this presentation, uh, to make this presentation with the name of the prefecture is Accurate and Timely Local Delta L1D. So I mentioned why is L1D, I will move to Delta and I will be explaining everything uh, backwards in the name. So definition of Delta, I mean, the, we, I think many people know about the stride prefecture, right? So you have a cast line that access a uh, load that access address 7, 10, 12, and 15. We can see that the stride, the jump, is in plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. What we call delta, what we call delta is the different, the distance with any other um, addresses that was accessed, that was requested by that load. So deltas, we have many deltas, not only one. In this case, we can have delta plus three, plus five, plus eight. Sorry, before was plus three, plus two, plus three. Um, 
So this is the concept. It is like a definition that we make here. And then y delta, right? If you have a stride y, then you want delta. Have very, very nice properties. First one, uh, imagine that you have this stride plus one, plus three, plus five. Plus one, plus three, plus five. Plus one, plus three, plus five. Well, a uh, stray prefecture could learn that too, but more complicated, uh, it's more complicated. With delta, we choose delta nine. We learn the distance nine to zero, one to, nine, to 10, four to 13. All prefectures here can be prefetched with a single delta. So this is one of the uh, nice properties, one of them. Then, as I mentioned, auto for the processor will reorder the addresses. So you have probably here your, an array or something and you are iterating it uh, one by one, cast line by cast line, but the processor is reordering things and you don't see that order. Stride, again, will have difficulties to, to guess what is happening here. But if you choose, for example, uh, distance five, you get all, okay? Even if they are reordered. Um, why local? Why local? There was a, a prefecture that was the championship of the second prefetching championship that was the best offset prefecture uh, that made global deltas. So the concept of deltas, they call it offsets, but it's very similar. Uh, was not uh, was not our concept, uh, but they have a global delta. Okay, so they try to find it within one application, no matter of the load that is accesses, find the delta that is the best for the application. We have here MCF, which is an spec application that is very hard to prefetch uh, because it's irregular sometimes. Uh, and if you have a best a global delta, you find that delta 62 is the best one, is the best one, uh, but you only cover 2% of the, of the misses. If you go delta per IP, and here in the X axis we have different IP loads, okay? We can see that for each load, the delta will be different. Makes sense, right? So if we choose the best one for each load, you will get for this application 10% performance, 10% uh, coverage, sorry, which is high time. But we want it to be timely. We are still with the title, right? Timely. So this simple, even with simple strides, plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, if we do plus two and the latency is quite high, we always we will always get late prefetches, which are not bad, but are not the ideal. So what we need to do is, which delta do we choose? We could choose delta four, that will work for all, delta 10, that will work for all. So what we do is to measure latency as in the previous entangled prefetch. We measure latency and we say, okay, delta, uh, uh, the latency is here. So to prefetch 12, I need to do it from two. So I will choose uh, delta 10. And it's accurate. So all, all this work, how do we uh, learn the deltas and how do we compute the accuracy? The, the accuracy. So we have, um, uh, for example, we have here a history. We have two, two tables, the history table and the table of deltas. The history table is all the accesses, all the misses, basically. So load A, as for like cast line two, in time zero. Load A, as for cast line five, in time 30, and B, this is in time 10 in time 50. So now it comes A, A again, that is asking for uh, address 12. So we go to all the A's because we only want local deltas and say which are the valid ones. So we have here plus 10 and we have here plus seven. So all of them can be introduced in our delta table. We have another two A that is 15. We say that plus, uh, well, sorry, plus seven, I didn't put it because it's, we assume that it's not timely, timely, okay? If it's not within the latency range, we don't put it. That's why we have the time here. So we are 
gathering all the deltas and we just uh, compute for each search what is the probability that a delta is there. So I did two searches and the delta was two times 100%. I did two searches, we only have one time the delta plus 13 is only 50%. We are accumulating this, computing the percentages, and we, based on that, we decide if the probability or if the coverage is more than 65%, we will prefetch to L1. Otherwise, we will prefetch to L2 if it's more than uh, 35%. We were also thinking in prefetching to the LLC, but we did some experiments and we didn't find that was better. Uh, but the general idea is to have a prefetcher that from the L1 has all the information and can prefetch in all the cast levels that, that uh, we don't need to replicate prefetcher at other levels. And this is uh, the, why we mentioned that it's accurate. We have here IPCP uh, accuracy for the gap benchmarks. IPCP was the winner of the third champ that data prefecture championship. And we can see that the accuracy for, for respect was relatively good, but for gap benchmarks is quite low. Uh, we get more or close to 90% uh, for gap in, in accuracy thanks to filtering, thanks to only prefetching when the coverage is high. Um, and this is the same graph as before. I'm showing full here. Basically, we have Verti combined with some L2 prefetches too. But if we want go to the interesting part, I would say that is mostly low storage prefetchers. Verti gets like 8.5% with only 2.5 kilobytes. Much, much less uh, size we need for the data prefecture that, that, than for the interaction prefecture. So, few questions here after. Is Verti restricted only to L1D prefetching? So, we uh, submitted a previous version of Verti, one that uh, participated in the third uh, data prefetching championship, to the first ML based data prefetching competition. That was prefetching for the LLC. And here we combined Verti with a technique that they call Linea, is link next address. This is because at the LLC, you don't have um, the continuous view of the virtual address. You would prefetch with physical address, and we try to overcome that. And also part of entangling, this is the E of blue of the tech, uh, technique, but uh, adapted for data prefetching. And uh, it uh, was the winner of that championship, this combination of the prefetchers. But I have to mention that I um, was not super happy with that because if you run, for example, IPCP, the previous prefecture that I did be before for L1, you get much better than what I was getting there for the LLC. So the, the message here is, L1D prefecture is, in my opinion, more important than LLC prefecture. Or if you do LLC prefecture, you should consider L1 or L2 prefecture also. Uh, this, this championship was not considered pre prefecture, prefecture at lower levels. And finally, again, I will talk about Grompa. Uh, yeah, what happened with the Grompa? The prefecture also get pol polluted in the back end with Grompa, right? So we will be presenting this micro uh, a paper on security of prefetching for security. But I was mentioned, well, it's how to make a Liberty prefecture or any prefecture sec secure. Okay, basically what you need to do is mm, secure. Okay, I have to define first secure for size channel attack, uh, speculative side channel attacks. Okay, so. The goal that it's here is to hide, not to be able to see any speculative trace in the cache. Okay, you have a speculative load. Uh, you cannot train your prefecture with that speculative load. If you have a speculative load, you cannot trigger your prefecture with that speculative load. Solu solution, do it everything at commit. You do it at commit, uh, you are not doing the things that should be because uh, you are late. You are late, all the prefetches are, are late. So we adapted the timeliness property 
to make it uh, not late. And just one graph here, this is Verti. Uh, for a non-secure non system uh, on access, this is our best result when there is no secure, but the secure one uh, on a secure system that gets like 5% degradation over a baseline is less than 5% worse than a non-secure system with a non-secure prefecture. Uh, and I would not have time for more, I think. Uh, but, uh, well, I think uh, it's 44, so I would stop here. I will not talk then about context-sensitive memory dependence prediction, but we can ask questions probably. Yes. A couple of things. I would like to convince you that working on LLC prefetchers is also worthwhile. Uh, and one reason is, suppose I want, I'm, I'm designing a new phone or whatever, I get my core from ARM, can't change that. Uh, but I can change the LLC prefetch. Right? If, I, if, I, if I get the core, the, you know, L1, L2 cat that comes with my thing I'm buying from ARM, but then I have to design the LLC and the network contract and everything. Um, all I can do is allow someone kind of get that. So in that context, I wonder if some of these ideas could be applied. I don't get IP, I don't, I don't know what the, the programming context value is, but there's still something I can do to do two prefetches. Um, if we are designing an L1 prefetch, and I think it's very cool, I think the work we've done is, is outstanding, state of the art prefetcher as far as I know, but it's, it's awesome. Um, when you say it's a local prefetcher, you mean you, you're associating IPs with deltas. Um, have you thought about associating deltas with other features, not IPs, but um, a trace or a piece of memory address or a hash of something that, that could be even more specific than an IP to a particular memory access being? So the question is, thank you. Thank you for the question. Very interesting. The question is, if there is that, well, there is uh, Daniel is saying that there is value in LC prefetching. Uh, because sometimes you have uh, components and you don't control what is in L1 and, and you cannot change that, but you can do your LLC better. If Verti can be adapted or even if you don't have the IP, if can be adapted to uh, LLC prefecture. Uh, yes, we have been working, doing some experiments on, on that. Uh, I think the best feature that you can have there is address proximity. Usually, same load is accessing to uh, special locality, right? So near addresses, and if you take a range, that can be that can be uh, be seen perhaps as a proxy of same IP. Okay, and uh, and yes, uh, it's important for sure. Uh, sorry if I say that it's not important. It's important to do LLC uh, prefetching research, but. In your example, you should consider that probably the ARM L1 or L2 core has a prefecture. So you should consider that there is a prefecture also helping you when you do LLC prefecture. Yes, look. Um, I have some questions about the timeliness you used here to measure, especially the, the deltas, right? So you measure the, the latency of the, of the request from time to kind of establish what's the, the rate of the and do anything champs in. Um, I think it has a rather listening latency model for accessing memory or and the caches, especially compared to, let's say, a large multi core that has a maybe a mesh node, uh, a lot of buffering in, in between, uh, maybe different memory controllers across the, the corners of the chip or whatever. Uh, I, I'm not sure about champs in kind of or, or the, the data setup, but do you think that's a that's a thing that uh, in a real processor it can be more challenging to do, or does that can affect somehow the effect in the pressure? I think there's a, a maybe it's, uh, it can have a, you know, have you studied that? Mm -hmm. Very nice question. So the question is, um, uh, Jamsin has a latency that may be seen to memory, for example, that may be seen simplistic. What happens when you model a more realistic latency that can vary more because of the interconnection networks or other resources? Um, so the yeah, answer here are many, many things. Very nice question. So first, uh, Jamsin models quite well what is uh, memory and if uh, 
the, the, the road address is closed, it's open. And so there are some marine latencies there. Um, but, uh, and we have run it. We can also include, it's include no interest in RAM later. So it's a more deep, deep, detailed the RAM model. And we have also test Verti with it. And it's, we didn't see problems. Uh, it per performs at, uh, as we expect. We are also in the process of uh, including Verti in the M5. Uh, we have a version of it. We are testing it. Results are not bad. Uh, the beginning were bad, but we was because of some mistakes in in uh, porting. I was a bit scared <laughs> when I saw that, but now we have good uh, results for uh, for that. Uh, ah, yeah, and I have the GM5 model is yes, model the interconnection network and this contention. So the the thing is that all these prefetches are adaptive, so the latency tend to be stable, you have periods of time without contention and then periods of time without con contention. So you can adapt to that periods. If those periods are long enough, you can prefetch well. And you prefer to adapt well by adapting the delta. And... Yes, yes. Everything, every, every 16 accesses, we are changing the, the computation. Uh, and this is something that can be uh, short or long, depending oh. on... Mm -hmm. Questions? Yes, I think you you can really bring to your question. How accurate should a simulator be to show that there's value in in some type of in, in, in therapy? How accurate did it need to be? Could you have just used a fixed make you know instead of using what Champson does, could you just have a fixed memory latency of 200 cycles or something? And if you showed a benefit, would that have would that have been enough? Uh, with the reviewers that accepted the paper. And it's an open research question, and it differs from 